We continue our series, What Do You Believe?, as we look at sin, right versus wrong. What is sin? There is no simple answer, as a Christian would have one definition, a Muslim or Hindu another. Others may question if such a thing as sin even exists. Our society has some generally accepted ideas about sin. When contrasting right and wrong, we view sin as something wrong, and would certainly include lying, cheating, stealing, or dishonesty. Things like murder, assault, and treason would certainly be wrong, and obviously considered as sin. Our framework for assessing sin comes from a moral code of conduct which has a Christian background. Sin is breaking the law of God. For centuries, the law of God has been used to govern right and wrong. The Ten Commandments has served as a guide for rightful living. Governments used God's laws as their criteria for establishing judicial laws to govern our land. As a result, people's rights were protected. However, in recent years, some have questioned the validity of certain laws and how they encroach on an individual's rights and freedoms. The laws which govern our nation specifically tell us certain actions are wrong, and by doing them we break the law and face punishment. In addition to our legal system, we have another code of conduct which falls under the guideline of general morality. It is possible for someone to sin without actually breaking the laws established by our government. A person who acts good or right may be referred to as a good moral person. But how do we decide, or who decides, what is sin within a general moral code of conduct? Here is where the distinction between right and wrong has become clouded. We are part of the generation that questions right and wrong, a generation that believes what is right or wrong for one person is not necessarily right or wrong for another. Let me use a personal example. I was concerned about a person's lifestyle, so I confronted that person. After I voiced my concern, the person simply stated, just because you or someone else thinks how I'm living is wrong, doesn't make it wrong. It's my life, and I should be able to do as I please. Accepting that I do not have the authority to decide what is morally right or wrong, someone must have that authority. What will happen to our society if every moral action is at an individual's own discretion? I believe it would lead to total chaos as we become void of moral principles. As Christians, we believe the Bible has established the principles of right and wrong and is the only true authority as to what constitutes sin. A perfect and holy God has clearly defined sin. Are you a sinner? We certainly don't like to think of ourselves in that light. Who wants to go around labeled as a sinner? It may not sound good, but the Bible tells us we are all sinners. 1 Kings 8 and 46 says, For there is no one who does not sin. In Romans 3 and 23 we read, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The fact is we are born sinners, and it is a natural part of who we are. Our two-year-old granddaughter said something we knew was not true. My wife asked her if she was telling a lie. Immediately she grinned and said yes. In Job 13 and 23, Job asked, How many wrongs and sins have I committed? How many do you think you have committed in your life? Often we sin without realizing it. Not only is sin defined as the wrong things we do, but also the wrong things we think. Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, 27 and 28, you have heard it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. In Matthew 5, 21 and 22, Jesus also said, You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Breaking God's laws by what we do, say, and think are often referred to as sins of commission. There are also sins of not doing or admitting that which God commands us to do, not saying, doing, or thinking 
that which God requires of us. James 4 and 17 says, Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. These are sins of omission. The story is told about a Sunday school teacher who asked her class, What are the sins of omission? After some thought, one little fellow said, They're the sins we should have committed, but didn't get around to it. I believe the issue surrounding right and wrong will always be debated within our society. When God created us, he gave us free will, the ability to think, reason, and choose for ourselves. Some people will choose to sin, often covering it up as their fundamental right to do as they please. I believe one day we will face a higher authority who will judge us for our refusal to see sin for what it really is, disobeying God. What do you believe? Join us again next week for part four of our series.